Hey guys, another installment of uh, Full Access UTV After Hours, kinda. It's uh, well over 100 degrees in the shop today. We're trying to get some videos and stuff done, so we gotta do them later in the day. But uh, today we wanted to show you guys how to do a proper alignment on a UTV. There is a lot of really bad videos and things like that out there um, showing you how to incorrectly do it. Uh, alignments are super important from me, from racing. Um, high speed or even short course alignments can can uh, kill a car, can kill the power, and could be what decides your win. So, you know, I'll cover a little bit on the racing aspect. We got, uh, we were doing a little bit of toe out sets on our race car on our RS1. Um, really made a bite a little harder into the turn and it would rotate better. So that's one of those scenarios. Another scenario that um, you want to have it right is, you know, high speed desert. Your suspension's moving up and down. And if you're already off in the beginning, when you set a full bump or full droop, depending on your car, you're going to tow out in, in and out even more or worse. So um, we've came up with a basically what we've been using in the shop for years, but now we're, we've got it out in the market for everybody else to use. So today you kind of want to do a video. I'm sure it'll be a long one. Um, you might even watch us getting a little sweatier, but uh, hey, we got some tools in here like the leaf blowers that might help us out, but um, let's go over the product. So this is our kit. It's the full access UTV do-it-yourself alignment kit. And this is pretty much how it will show up. You got two laser cut plates. So you got one for each side. They are for any vehicle that has a four on 137 or four on 156 millimeter lug pattern. Even the center bore is larger than most any car, so you shouldn't have any interferences, but you can use them on Can-Ams, Talons, uh, RZRs, multiple, multiple vehicles, and of course the KRX. Um, also comes with two matching tape measures. Matching tape measures is super important for the alignment. We're not doing this digitally, so uh, having an equally manufactured tape measure is the best way to do it, and then when we get these on the car, we'll kind of show you. Um, we'll also kind of cover camber. You cannot really adjust the camber in the front of most UTVs. Um, in the rear you can on some, some you can't, but uh, basically we'll show you even with this tool how to do you know, basic camber checks and uh, you know, even some adjustment. But for that, we're, we basically just got a little digital gauge and it works out really well and I'll show you how to use that. Um, so yeah, these are some of my props and, uh, and basically uh, I guess I'll get right to it. So alignments, um, a lot of mistakes out there, a lot of videos that I've watched don't talk about multiple, multiple things. Um, one of the first ones is tire size. Tire size is super important in your alignment. You see guys setting these things, um, basically hanging in the air. Um, there is so many things wrong with how people are aligning the cars that I can even tell you, like Kawasaki, I know for a fact, brand new out of the box, these KRXs are, are not truly aligned correctly. They just don't think it's that important because it's off-road. But off-road, if you're trying to build a car that can do 80 miles an hour, you know, um, people just overlook an alignment. But the whole time, if your front end's pushing or dragging because it's towed in or towed out, then you're just scrubbing off speed. And if you just got your alignment right, you might see an increase. I mean, I mean, you definitely see an increase, but above and beyond that tire wear, things like that, the dealers aren't so worried about it, but it's something that I'm personally anal about. I worry about it. And so, um, we've been using these tools and now we've got them out for the people. So let's we'll talk about the, the tire size. Well, let me move to this side. So here's my horrible drawing I made, but one of the things that happens in the alignment is people don't align it for their proper tire size. Uh, most tire shops that you even take a car to, a lot of the guys don't actually truly align to tire size and it's one of the most important things. Hopefully by looking at this, you can kind of make sense of what I drew, but obviously this would be the center of the car and you got an A-arm going out and you can say this is your wheel hub and knuckle assembly going to a tire. In this particular drawing, I have a 35 inch tire and a 27 inch tire. What I'm trying to show you in this drawing is if you do a toe set and you can say your average toe set is you want to be an eighth inch towed in the front. If you were to do an eighth inch toe in the front for a 27 inch tire on a 35 inch tire, you're actually going to be five sixteenths towed in, which is a lot of scrub and too much. So you get weird handling characteristics and all things like that. But that's basically what that drawing is. Now via the magic of camera, I'm going to 
show you the next one. Okay, guys, this is my horrible drawing showing suspension wheel travel. So every vehicle is different. Um, some have horrible front suspension and suspension design, um, and some have better than others. So some vehicles, when they droop out the suspension, top of the tires, they camber in. Um, some of them, they camber out. It really depends on your vehicle. And I got like a B. The Kawasaki KRX has one of the best suspension designs that's out there. You can look up videos about them. They don't have much toe change within the entire cycle of the suspension. So that's that. But what I'm trying to show you in this little drawing is <clears throat> keep in mind your suspension's coming up and down. You need to set your car at right height. So if you set it here because you added a two inch lift, you need to align it here. If, if you lowered it or you think your springs are sagging, they're not right. So coming back into like a Kawasaki is supposed to be set at 16 and a half inches of belly. And that is with stock 31s. Well, the springs sag out. Every, every manufacturer's springs sag out and the cars start to settle. So when they start to settle, they lose alignment. Um, especially with the worst and, and some of the worst suspension cars out there, they really get bad. So it's really important to do the alignment and get it right. Um, another thing that to note too is when you check your ride height and do your suspension, uh, that should be done before you even think about doing an alignment because if you're trying to set to that 16 and a half inches, keep in mind that's for 31s. So if you're doing 35s, that's a four inch taller tire, but your half of it gave you the height. So that's two inches. So now you're at uh, 31 and add two inches. That's your new height, ride height. So at 16 and a half, add two inches of that. That's your new ride height. That's where you should be. Once you set all that, then you can start doing uh, everything else to the alignment. So a couple things to talk about. I'll grab a tape measure. This is the way a lot of people are doing their alignments. Um, it's, it's right and it's wrong, but we've been using this tool for years in the shop and we have no issues with it. So uh, this is a lot of things that guys will do. They'll take a tape measure. They'll go to center and center of tire. They will go to outside a tire they will go inside to inside a tire um, they'll go rim to rim and as you see and the problem with this one is rim to rim is whatever your interpretation of that tape measure meant and going back and forth and only trying to set an eighth of an inch of toe that's not going to happen the other thing to keep in mind is when you're on a wheel this particular car has 15s that's only seven and a half out inches out from the center um, if you're running a 32 inch tire, 16 inches out is where your toe in is set. So that's completely wrong and you want to try to fix that. Um, other things I've seen, guys put bars on the sides of the tires. Uh, I would never align to a tire in any way, whether it be center, inside, outside or anything. Everybody knows if you take a tire and you just spin it on the car, you're going to watch it wobble. If you've been following your buddy and his UTV or something, you see those tires shaking going down the road. I mean, there's nothing true. So what did you align it to? Which one of these two magic spots hit at the right spot where you aligned it to? So um, don't do that. Get it right. You know, it's real simple to do. It's inexpensive and, uh, and it'll make it last. Um, one of the things too, I maybe should talk about is the dealers. The dealers are not aligning these things. I don't know if I already covered that, but uh, they need to be aligned from the dealer. Uh, they don't really care much about your tire wear and they're just sending you out because it's a dirt vehicle, but um, for multiple reasons from racing and everything else that should be done. You might cut that. I don't know, but okay. So this is uh, this is a 2013 um, RZR XP 900. Um, we had to upgrade the arms. We just did all new ball joints and bushings and everything on it. And we did the super ATV heavy duty tie rods. If you know RZRs, they always need replacement parts. They always need upgrades. So that we thought this is, hey, this is a perfect rig. This is what we'll do the alignment on today and kind of show you how to do it. Um, I think that's pretty much it. Besides, we're about to get it ready and, and set it up for the tires and rims. So, uh, or get the tires and rims off. So the first step, which is one of the most important in an alignment, is keep in mind your ride height it needs to be set right. That means you can't jack it up and then try to set it down in a line. So what we're going to do is kind of show you how to do it. The easiest way is keep it in a perfectly straight line and drive it back and forth three or four times. Um, especially if you did some work to it, might, might even want to do it more than that. Just make sure it's settled and that suspension's at ride height. From there, 
we're going to get the front tires and rims off and then we're going to show you how to settle it down from there so so as you can see it's right off the ground right now and this is the point where you want to take off the wheels and tires Okay, so Wyatt just got the tires off. This is Wyatt. He's the mullet whisperer. You're supposed to say like, yeah, Billy. Hey, it is what it is. <laughs> Okay, so we got the wheels and tires off. Now we're gonna put the mounts on. One of the things you're gonna notice is these holes that mount them are uh, larger than your studs. And we did that on purpose, so your actual taper on your lug nut, that's what's gonna center them up. So let's get them on here real quick. Just make sure it goes right to the center, like that. That's it, that's one installed. And you can see, I'll try to just set it straight right now. And then, uh, so the Magic TV, we'll go to the other side, do that, and then I'll set up the next step. Okay, so as you can see, we got both set up. One of the other things you're gonna need to come up with that's not supplied in the kit, is some steel plates. Um, this is some old diamond plate that we have and they're, they're uh, about equal in size, but you can almost use anything. Don't use wood. But basically you want to set it to your lowest point. Now this being in really old RZR, it looks to me like the A-arms are the lowest point. So I'm going to set them like this and start setting this thing down. And then I can tell already, I gotta make a slight adjustment. So a couple things, you wanna keep the alignment tool straight and you wanna get these. So you know when it sets down on the ground, the suspension is gonna go out. What you're doing with the steel plates is you want it to go out. You want it to just glide and not get stuck to the concrete. So that's what we're using the steel plates for. Okay, now I'm releasing all the weight off of it. Okay, now we're still not there. So next thing you wanna do, start bouncing on it. You see how that suspension moves out? Now I'm not gonna jump up and I'm not gonna jump down, but I'm also gonna come back to the rear and push down on it a little bit. Just make sure it's good. I'm gonna check that steering wheel, put that steering wheel straight. And then one more check. And that's right height. That's as close as you're going to get it. So if you take a look at it, move the jack back. You can see the steering wheel straight. Driver's tied. Front tire is pointing way out to the driver's side. And the passenger is also pointing to the driver's side. But this is where we want to adjust it. You want to try to keep the steering wheel straight. Um, in reality, what you can do now is you can actually check it because you never know, especially if you bought it used, if this is in the center or not. So by putting your hand in the center, you can count it. So we got almost one turn. So going back this way, go the other way, almost one turn. So I'm gonna say that steering wheel being centered is, is correct. And the tie rods are way too short on this side and too long on this side. So here comes your next chore. So now you gotta start getting it to um, just eyeballing it. And I know 
but this one needs to go to the passenger side. So we have these tie rods already popped loose. I don't know why I can get in there, but these were new tie rods, but I have this jam nut loose and we had the other loose. So I'm going to start turning it out, try to get it right. So I'm guessing right about there is straight. We're pretty close to it. And this one needs to go the opposite way. This one needs to shorten up. So I'm going to say right about there. So that's when the tape measures come in. What you want to do is put the tape measure in over there and set it and lock it in right there. Do the same thing on the other side. Hey, maybe the camera guy wants to help. Just saying. Ready? Yep, yep, yep. Alright, so this can be done with one person, but it's no fun. So, well, it's not bad, but so I still see that this one's towed out this way now that I come up and look at it. And so is this one. So I'm going to give them a little bit more cranks and I'm just trying to count my turns. So that was two quarters for half. And this one. See, same thing again. So now if they kind of both look straight, which I'm standing back looking, I still think that one's turned driver and this one looks good. So now we can start dialing in that alignment. Again, I'm making sure the steering wheel straight and then I'm going to start reading the tape measures. Uh, this one right now is at 59 and an eighth. Is that 59? Wait, no, 58. Yeah, 59 and an eighth and about 58 and seven eighths. So definitely towed out in the front. So because I know that, and I think this side looks like it's going in, I'm going to crank this one out a little bit more. Going back to reading the tape measures, say 58 and three quarter and 59 and eight. So I went a little too much. So let's see. So you see that was the slightest turns are what's going to make a difference in the alignment. Um, a lot of the times if it's close to begin with, you're going to notice like an eighth of a turn and you got to figure out how to do it yourself. You can put a paint mark, pen, a Sharpie mark, whatever you want and just count them. But if you're going to go out quarter on one side, go quarter on the other especially if you know your center wheel, steering wheel straight. Well, this thing's so old that we don't know. So we're just trying to bring it to a, a dry straight with a straight steering wheel. And that's that one of the main keys we're trying to do here. But I think I'm at 15, 15 sixteenths and 58. So, no, excuse me, 59. So that is, a 16th degree of toe in. And now one thing to keep in mind is, I'll grab the tape measure. This right now is a 16th degree of toe in, and that's from center of wheel to uh, the end of, of our alignment tool. So this is basically set right now for a 31 inch tire. So that's what we set up at, 31, 32 is the most common. But if you have a 34, 35, um, even bigger, you know, you wanna get closer to that measurement but a 16th of toe in right now, and it's too far out, that's close. If this, if this thing was the perfect length for his uh, 27 inch tires, then I would set it for an eighth inch toe in. But because it's out, I think the best way to do it is just keep it at a 16th of an inch. So right now, that's it. It's pretty much ready to be tightened up and uh, set all your jams. So once you're ready, just set one jam in. Lock the other. And the 
this is a lot easier to do with new products instead of old but if you did it right off the bat after you bought some stuff it wouldn't be too bad so even on this rzr we're gonna have to put the boots back on the rack because we changed everything but that gets you there so i think that's it um not much more to think about in doing the alignments not at this point when it's 110 degrees in here so i just been doing this it's so hot in here <laughs> but i think that's it you probably can't hear me in this windstorm well maybe i'll get that off okay well i don't know hopefully that helps this works for rzrs talons everything else um kawasaki's krx's and and that but this is the way to properly do it once you've set it here and you've got it at right height you know this is right you don't have to worry about it anymore um, unless anything big change you know if you change an a-arm hit something so on and so forth but actually i will show you something else if your vehicle is sitting on flat ground so and you're curious what your camber's at with these with this alignment tools sitting there we can do is set it on there and i can't read it from where i'm at but you're at zero zero so this thing has zero front camber so same thing with these you can put them in the rear and if you need to do a toe set in the rear you can do a toe set in the rear um, a lot of vehicles are slightly adjustable like the krx is and uh I believe even the RZR wants to get adjustable radius rods, you can do that too. So this will help you set up the toe in the rear, and in the rear you can also set up the camber, but you need a nice digital gauge. Um, you can use the cheesier ones, but you know, if you want to do it right, that's do it right. So that's it guys. Hopefully this video was good. Hopefully it explains why not to do it the other ways and why to do it the right way. But uh, if it doesn't, hey, let me know what I missed in the comments. Um, if you liked it, also let me know in the comments. Anything else you think we should change or do, just let me know, and uh, I'd appreciate it. But hit that click and subscribe button, and uh, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, I'm so hot, dude. Anyway, so click that like and subscribe button, and you have a nice day.